Hey boo, welcome back. Or if you're new here, my name is Carolyn Gray and I post on Tuesday evenings and Friday evenings. And today we are going to discuss a few essentials that you need for the autumn winter. Now, if you know me, you know some of my textures and situations can get a little bit edgier and out there, but I am trying my best to keep it very basic and clean cut for you guys so we can just basically start from scratch and understand how we can basically build a capsule wardrobe for the season, which has been kind of up and down weather-wise. It's like kind of springtime, kind of fall, not really. You cold in the morning, sweating by the afternoon, and then you need your jacket again by the evening. So we're going to do what we need to do. So the first thing that I feel is the number one, it sometimes it takes a long time to meet the perfect mate, but a leather jacket. You can never go wrong with a leather jacket, especially something that looks really heavy duty, can distress really well over time, you know, feels supple, feels rugged if that's what you're into. Some people are into soft leather. I'm into both, but I tend to like something a little bit more rough around the edges because to me, in my mind, I already see how it's going to age and distress. Let me show you an example. I have two leather jacket examples. So one of my... Oh, this is my baby, my Rag and Bone from 2019 sample sale, okay? 260 sample sale. This jacket, obviously with that shiny leather, it's super heavy, super durable and, and rugged. And I felt like, oh man, this is gonna age really well. It's not that simple, but I feel like it has these classic, the burgundy brown elbow and this very beautiful black with this pop of red inside of it. But literally something like this can go over any pair of shoulders out there, okay? And it could elevate any look. If you're wearing a whole sweatsuit situation, it's going to elevate. Even if you're wearing a gown, putting this over it, it gives you a little bit of edge. So, you know, you can, you can definitely, you can really build a lot of looks around a leather jacket now another aesthetic of um leather jacket this one's a little out there she's a little gaudy but you know i had I, I i do what i do but this is actually a custom blazer jacket made by the namesake which is based out of canada um but they sometimes have pop-ups here in new york and literally i fell in love with this green color this dark forest green color and i had them put in this pop of color on the inside for me even though it's a christmas duet um green and red will always be spectacular to me it is complementary colors i don't wear a lot of colors i love the color green so when i do green i do green like this and this is a little bit more tailored closer to the body and then i added this piece that can button in and out of it but Something, you know, a little bit more fitted, closer to the body will always be in style, on trend for you. I feel like, you know, we always talk about trends and we're always looking at the next best thing. But I feel like, you know, to really build your own personal style, you have to figure out what really works for you. And that, to me, will never go out of style. That, to me, is trend-proof, um, fad Proof, you know what I'm saying? When I was coming up in college, I went to Fashion Institute of Technology here in New York. My teachers were like, whatever you do, stay away from the fads because they die quick. And at the end of the day, you don't want to buy pieces that by the next season you're over. You don't see how it melds, how it goes with the rest of your wardrobe. You want to pick pieces that are innate to you, that make you feel good, that fit you and your lifestyle and can go with so many other pieces. And it could be edgy out there type of prints and colors, but as long as it goes around your personal formula, you can never go wrong. Okay, so next on the list is sweaters. Now I've been fighting my sweaters for the past couple weeks because it's like too hot, too cold, and it's just, it's I'm always sweating, I'm glistening under all of my sweaters, but you need a really good crew neck, a really good turtleneck sweater, and I am a sucker for cardigans. Hold on. Now, I just got this from um Zara because I'm I'm on this whole like I want to wear cream and khakis now all of a sudden. You know, I'm going from dark, dark colors during the summer to like creams and creamsicles during the winter don't don't ask me i think i'm the watcher 
how the wife was styled in that in that show really propelled me to be like you know that's a chic look but i got this crew neck from zara soft knit situation this doesn't feel like it's going to be super itchy on me i can i actually have a high tolerance not everyone is like me i could deal with itchiness in my sweaters but this one is a lot more softer than others that i've had in the past and this was 49 dollars but I like the length. It's not super long. It's not cropped either. It meets me right at the hip. But something about a crew neck is always super rich. It's very sleek looking. And I feel like if you go a little bit rounder or U-line, I don't, I don't like it. So it's either a crew neck or a funneled turtleneck moment. Now, can you see? I have a neon sweater, y'all. I'm wearing a pop of color these days. I really like this sweater because it came really long. I saw it with a like, I could wear it with like a pinstripe blazer um, a, as a dress. But I like how many outfits I can come up with it in my mind. And it's also a color that I actually do not wear at all. And I really like and enjoy it. This is also from Zara. Really soft material. I was sweating bullets in this the other day because, you know, Mother Nature was like... <laughs> global warming huh but yeah so you know she does what she needs to do because we we acted up and now we're here um but yeah this it gives slouch it gives cozy it gives niche i don't know but i feel like whenever you have a nice turtleneck that just drapes around and cradles your entire face it just looks really put together and then my ultimate fave the cardigan now this is giving this is definitely a school spirit situation. Now, I showed this in one of my last uh, hauls. This is actually from Kith, one of their latest drops. Um, it is unisex, but I think this was in their men's section. I always like to keep my eye out on Kith's men's um, drops because, you know, I like a little androgyny, you know, a little sporty look. But I feel like cardigans and a lacy thin bra underneath with stacked necklaces okay with a pair of trousers listen you gotta try it and i love how thick and heavy this sweater is um this is i forget what they call these this is a classic letter sweater i don't even by the time i put this out i'll, I'll put the name of what i'm looking for in my head um but I have a couple different cardigans that are my favorite. I have even a Burberry cardigan that has slits on the side from the men's section too from 2019, I think. They're spring 2019. And it just gives me extra. I don't know. It gives me Mr. <laughs> Mr. Roger, Mr. Rogers, but but just I don't know, meets Paris. It's like he's living in, in Paris though, you know? Mr. Rogers always wore a cardigan. And he was a good guy, okay? Let me get a little bit of matcha. Hold on. Get a little thirst. A little thirst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. And now, after sweaters, I go straight into a blazer. And I'm only going to show one because, honestly, I'm crazy. And I have too many blazers. And I found out that a lot of people have addiction issues with blazers, too. I blame the Frankie shop. But, shout out to Frankie shop because the girls can't stop wearing the girls can't stop wearing Frankie shop, but an oversized, nice, weighted, I actually put um, elastic bands around my sleeve so I can pull them up and they stay up high, but a beautiful weighted blazer. And it could be super oversized or slightly oversized to each its own, but a blazer always elevates a look. You could be wearing jeans and a button down and feeling a bit too casual. Throw a blazer on, put on a loafer. It's giving Julia Roberts in the 90s. Okay. It's giving clean. It's giving, I cleaned up my act at the end of Pretty Woman. Yes, a blazer. And you can literally go to a thrift store and they have a bunch of grandpa blazers in there that you can choose from in all different color variations. But I tend to reach for the navies, the blacks. And when it comes to like a tan beige, I do I do like a good linen beige blazer moment. Mm -hmm. Now I wonder if I can find something a bit more heavier in that color considering I'm going this cream khaki route. Okay, we'll get there later. After blazers, I would say long sleeves, 
button downs, things of that nature, a, a close knit crew neck situation because those are your layering points. Those are something that you could just throw on underneath a jacket, a, a leather jacket, a blazer, um, a strap dress from your summer that you want to transition into your fall wardrobe and, and layer up on. But I feel like a long sleeve anything, a long sleeve t-shirt is a must. And again, you can never go wrong with like a button down like this, right? And I found a couple of them on Zara's website that do not have those annoying gold buttons on the sleeve. Why do they, oh, first of all, Zara, why do y'all always make these sweaters with those gold buttons on the side? Who asked for those? I remember that Michael Kors did that in 2010 and it was a hit. But then also it went on super duper sale. Why do y'all feel like this is okay? Stop putting those buttons on there because it's really a turn off. For me, okay? I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but I, I'm sick of seeing them things. And another thing, I feel like I also show this, but a long sleeve dress moment with a rib knit dress, a textured knit dress, a, a jersey, a heavy jersey, like a Norma Kamali long sleeve turtleneck dress that I love. I love me some Norma Kamali, okay? But very like you can put this on and then throw a leather jacket on or a big puffer and it just layers on so beautifully really really get into a long sleeve moment because it's just better you'll feel more cozier you'll be able to layer a lot easier too and things just flow the next level we're gonna go to are trousers now Right now, I feel like there's an even tug of war going on. You got your super slim fits, and then you got your super wide legs. And then straight leg is like, okay, I have my moment. I'll wait for you girls to figure this out. But I love a good wide leg trouser. Let me show you. Most prized possessions in my wardrobe. These are Bottega. Wide leg. When I say wide, I mean wide, baby. I can fit. I can fit my whole self in one pant leg. Okay. But this, and I, I believe this is actually a summer wool, but it's heavy enough for the winter. A wide leg pant can do you no wrong, and especially with like a cinched in blazer, or a fitted cardigan, or a cropped sweater, and I'm just talking about fall looks. It is the most aesthetically pleasing thing ever. And these I can actually wear heels with, but I can also wear like my loafers and still feel like, I feel like this gives me Diane Keaton and Felicia Rashad. It's my favorite. And if you're gonna go with a wide leg pant, you also need a slim fitted pant. Also one of my greatest purchases that I've been wearing nonstop back to back for the last couple of years these redone pants and I don't know why they don't sell them anymore but it's actually really frustrating I found a good dupe like not dupe but a, a similar style from the Frankie shop the Frankie shop always has really good tailored slim like slim silhouette pants that you can go to but th these are my favorite because they also have um, a cuff at the bottom so these are pleated pant and this with a t-shirt and some converses and a heavy-duty jacket girl that's the look it's super it's simple it's simple you can do any type of shirt with these types of pants i feel like and i have these in navy and then the bottegas are dark are um are black so i feel like i have a really good neutral rotation and i also do have a winter weight like a vintage pair of white slim fitted pants that look amazing with the cream color 70s chuck taylor it's like if you wear something that's fitted and cinched at the top of your waist here and it balloons out slightly and then carrots back at the bottom that's all you need that's all you need. and also i'm going to throw this in here because i realized when i was purging oh my god I don't have a black sweatsuit set okay so i went to aritzia and i found out tna is their brand and they're sold there and i got the what is this one what is this style give me a moment so this is the tna sweat fleece 
cozy fleece in the mid weight. When I tell you these are so supple and they have them in, um, I think they have them in short, regular or tall styles or short and tall styles. But either way, they have different lengths for the girls who need a little bit extra, you know, little anxious. They, they ankles going to be cold if they don't get the right inseam situation. So, yes, I love the fact that they give you those options, but they are so amazingly soft cozy and they fit really well not too over the top like oversized they're just right and another brand that does sweatpants sweatsuits really well is actually my good friend be iconic um ashley muhammad's brand she has them in a heather gray and nipsey blue and a green like a kelly like bottega green and they also wear really well I wash them normal and hang to dry. I do that with all my sweats because I don't want any type of shrinkage. I'm not saying it's the material. I'm saying in my building, my wash and dries here in this building that we pay for every time we use them have a vendetta against our clothes. So for the most part, I just wash and then hang everything to dry because I don't have the time to wonder why. Why this? shrunk so bad the material calls for a regular tumble dry no no i don't i don't need that in my life hang dry obviously if we talked about trousers we're going to talk about denim denim is really a painful experience to try on and figure out the best look for you and i feel like i'm about to go through that again because i've lost some inches um and I bought these in the summertime and they were just perfect. Nudie Denim is such a classic um, brand. I remember working with them when they first started at Atrium NYC in Soho. And we went to their showroom. We understood like the love that they have for denim. They even have a repair um, component on site at their store where, you know, if you rip your jeans, it's like a warranty. Basically, you can take it there and they'll fix it up for you. They'll hem it up for you. But these are a slim fit and perfect at my ankle where I could wear them with a boot, an ankle boot underneath. I could wear them with a beautiful loafer. I could wear them with any kind of sneaker that doesn't like, you know, make it look crazy. And it's just a really nice slim fit. They're not a skinny jean. I have skinny jeans, but you know, I feel like there's a time and place for skinny jeans. They're not really so on trend and I'm not really feeling them to be on trend for myself, my personal lifestyle. I feel like my slim pants are more of my style, but also if you're going to get into slim, then you have to get into a wider fit. I'm not talking about bell bottom right now or super flare, but a wider leg like these vintage um, reworked Levi's by Van Mm -hmm. Atelier. There's a word there that I don't know how to pronounce, but I do believe that this is a black owned brand or people of color um, run this situation here. And they did amazing with this reworking detail because this honestly, it, it's, it falls at the perfect place on my waist, not too low for the coin slot to appear and not too high to make me feel like, oh my God, I can't eat in these, you know? So these are really cozy jeans that I have and they have a perfect flare at the bottom where I could wear like a really cute, um, like a heel boot or a flat boot and it'll look really beautiful all together. So, you know, you need your slim jean and then you need a jean that is a little bit flared. I feel everyone has their own emotions towards different color blue jeans. I tend to like blue jeans that are on the lighter side but have some medium color blue characteristics. Does that make any sense? Like, I, I'm be honest, I'm be honest with you. I don't really love the wash of these jeans. I would like the jean to really be this color all over, but it's a bit more darker here. And that's all right. I still think that they're a classic color. But this is my favorite, like rocks with anything rocks with anything this is the color uh jean that i like so moving on because we're almost i feel like we're at the halfway point in the autumn you can't go wrong with these two pieces and when i mix them together oh, i love it hold on i'm gonna pop this out just a little bit so Everyone, everyone 
needs a trench, a khaki trench. Now, whether it has a cape, whether it has a layer piece, whether it's your Burberry classic, a trench coat is a forever situation. And with a denim jacket underneath, this is my favorite combination by themselves and without each other. Beautiful. But together, I love these two specifically. Now, I really lucked out with this particular brand, um, Boya Rose Gavaya. Alrighty. Got it from Motor Operandi, though, okay? On sale at that. And this is a heavy duty trench coat, okay? It has two different layers. This can completely come off and be on its own, or I could wear it together, which I usually do for the most part. And this denim jacket I got from ASOS. But literally these two these two pieces layer so nicely together and it's a heavy situation. I feel like it goes with so many outfits, whether I'm going to the gym, running errands, in a more professional aesthetic situation, and even a gown. I've worn like a little I worn a maxi dress that is a lot more elevated with this jacket not too long ago. And I felt so refined. I felt so within myself like i i felt really good in that whole look and it was a black dress and it draped over but this jacket any any trench coat and if it's slightly oversized the better i don't care what year it is i don't care what's on trend as far as coats are concerned i feel that when you have a roomier trench coat so much more can happen as far as how you tie it and cinch it and drape it over your body as long as it's not like Oh my god this is about to fall off my shoulders so big like at least one size up from your normal size that you have ample space for a sweater or for another jacket underneath it and it'll just give that aesthetic and personally i like a length of a trench coat to be super long like almost hitting the floor or at least at my ankles so the next outerwear thing for me that i think is super important is a wool coat and i like more masculine tailored aesthetics because that also is a consistent classic piece um and you know what's funny yesterday i was looking for where i bought this from i couldn't remember and it was in the back of my closet and i couldn't look at the tag but this coat from mango this salt and spe this is it's like a salt and pepper speckled situation super long i mean <laughs> This is to die for, and it's a heavy coat. Mango does coats well. Like, when they do a coat, they really do a coat. And it lasts forever. I remember I had a puffer coat that I would just not let go of because, to me, it felt like my personal sleeping bag everywhere I went. And it was blue. It was an electric blue. You couldn't tell me nothing about that coat not going with everything that I had. I wore it with everything. But Mango does coats really well. But this... This particular coat, I love. I love the colorway because it can go with everything. I love the length of it. I love how it drapes over my shoulders. I like how it layers over top of my sweaters. It's just a really, like a stand-up guy, but in a coat. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I've also, I also think like it never hurts to go vintage shopping when it comes to um, coats as well. But this particular Christian Dior vintage moment Oh, baby, I wear the heck out of this one. Also because of the color. You know, it goes, it's a nice brown. It's like a nice burgundy moment. And it just gives you a full moment. I really would love to know the woman who wore this before. I know she's sassy. I know she's sassy. Yes, she is. And I have a few more styles coming up, but I need to charge my battery. Because <laughs> she's acting brand new. All right, I'll be back. So we're back. And I only have like a few more items that I think are super essential. Now, obviously, when it gets a little bit colder, you're going to need this particular item. And you can do it long to the floor like I usually love to do because I don't want no parts of my body to feel cold during the winter months. Okay. Are we focusing? Are we having a problem? Okay. Because y'all know how my camera is. But a cute puffer. This one's actually a cropped puffer. And it actually comes with a little bit of a its own scarf puff that's attached to the jacket but really chic as well i chose this color again this is more of like a grayish green um like i said i'm not one to wear a lot of color but what one color i am really married to in all different shades is a green 
I feel like it just goes really well against my skin. It pops out. I feel like it's a little bit different from the usual black. You know, once upon a time, like I said, I had that boo electric blue big old sleeping bag coat from Mango, you know, running in these streets. But you need a bit of a puffer because there, there's going to be days. There's going to be days. And honestly, like, you'll probably wear a puffer way more than you wear certain things. But as long as you have a puffer, a tailored wool coat, and a trench coat, Listen, those are your essential coats that you need in life. In life, puffer, trench, wool, tailored coat. Now, I feel like this isn't for everyone. I felt I feel like it took me a while to get to this place where I was actually really loving a skirt moment. Um, but we're here. We're here. I feel that an A-line skirt, um, more so... I felt like this was trending a lot more last year, but I felt like this was actually a really good um, piece that I felt I wanted for my closet for times to come because an A-line skirt of this nature that actually, it looks like a T-skirt, it really flares out. This with a suede almond toe boot, high heel boot, over the knee boot, or slouchy in any color, honestly. It is the most, it's the 70s in me that lives for it. This is, this is that girl that's in me. I have a little bit of a 70s woman that lives in me. I don't know where she came from, but she loves moments where she can do something like this. And I feel like it goes really well with crop sweaters, oversized sweaters, turtleneck sweaters, um, a cinched blazer. An A-line skirt can actually go a really long way if you pick the right one. And that one has a bit of texture. Something that all, also, year after year, you can never go wrong with this too. It is a ribbed knit pencil skirt. Super easy. This one has a little bit of a higher slit there. So you can just showcase a lot more of your boot that you're wearing. But I feel like everyone should have a ribbed skirt in their, in their collection. Whether or not it has a slit. A rib skirt, a pencil rib skirt, always comes clutch. Because sometimes you need pieces in your wardrobe that you don't want to think about. You know it's going to look good on you. You know you feel amazing in it. And it can go, up, go on with so many different things. I could throw a regular crew neck sweater with this. Pair of boots, flat or tall. Throw on a, a shawl around the neck to create a little bit more texture. And I'm out the door with my coat. You don't have to think too hard with this. This is pretty. This is the most basic piece I probably have. Like as far as color, texture, moment, it's the most basic piece I have. And then after the skirt, we'll get into two more things. Obviously, what I'm wearing, a button down. I tend to do mine oversized, but it goes with everything. My other favorite piece with the stripes from Nomnia. Nomia NYC. Hey girl can't go wrong with this either. This is a classic situation too. You can make sure that it's a little bit longer so with peekaboos at the end of your sleeves when you're wearing your cool blazers. I feel like a, a button down will always be in style, especially if it's a little oversized, that boyfriend look, right? Every season actually. You need this every season. And last, but definitely not least, and it may not be every for everyone, a leather pan. A leather pan for me, it's going to be a skinny situation. I do have a little bit of a boot cut moment somewhere in the closet. But these have been with me rocking for seven years. Okay? A leather pant is one of the best pieces I love to have. I love having in my wardrobe for fall and winter. Because it just gives you that second skin. But it also protects you against the cold in some ways. Like you have to. Sometimes you might have to wear tights. Just for an extra layer underneath. But to me it's such a rock and roll sexy chic situation. And it has the appeal to go with so many other tops. And boot styles in the wardrobe. Now this concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, click, subscribe. Tell your friends about it. I will be putting more collections together with these pieces i'll show you how i style them in another video but these are the essentials i think will rock on and carry you through the season it is a perfect capsule do it your way your own color your own print and it will be innate for you in your own dna i hope you enjoyed it thanks for coming along and visiting with me i'll see you later bye
Thank you.